MSNBC anchor Rachel Maddow announced she's taking a break from her primetime spot on the news network to focus on a new podcast and a feature film for NBC Universal. The Rachel Maddow Show is currently MSNBC's highest rated show. Maddow will reportedly be replaced by a rotating series of hosts during her break, which according to Business Insider will be for several weeks. The film series will be based on her Bagman podcast, with Ben Stiller directing the story of former Vice President Spiro Agnew. Deputy Opinion Editor at Newsweek, Bayou Unger Sargon, joins us to discuss the major shift at MSNBC. Welcome back, Bayou, and thank you for filling in last week. Of course. Tried to fill your big shoes, Ryan. It was difficult. <laughs> <laughs> I, I doubt that at all. People loved having you here. We'll get, have to get you back uh, very soon. Um, so Rachel Maddow, she had this uh, she had this contract dispute, which you covered uh, about a year ago, uh, where she threatened to just you know hang it up and uh, you know move on and do more interesting things, the podcast, this and that. Uh, she she lives basically out in Western Massachusetts, right? So uh, just a beautiful place to be. Uh, I'm sure at some point. It's got to be annoying to just be constantly doing a, what, nine o'clock show. Uh, you don't need the money at that at this at that point. Mm -hmm. uh, yet so many anchors and maybe I'm, and I'm curious about this because uh, you've covered the media so long. Like so many anchors who don't need it anymore. Uh, it's, it just feels like they're addicted, like they can't give up that chair, like they will die in that chair before you know, they go on to do more interesting things like a podcast, yeah. a feature film, that sort of thing. So she's saying she's going to be back. Like, why? Why come back? What is like? I think, you know, I totally agree with you. Like, I think a lot of us are like, you know, if I, you know, the first million I made, I would no longer be doing this. I'd find a better way to like, you know, impact my nation and my community and, you know, to give back. And, you know, it would be one thing if these people were saying really important things, challenging the narrative, you know, the one dissenting voice or whatever. Okay, you want to pay me a million dollars, you know, a week to do that. Okay, you know, but really at this point to have this sort of chorus just repeating each other, you know, with Rachel Maddow, I think it's really interesting because there's no jur other journalist who is so deeply identified with the Russiagate narrative and the media just beclowning itself with stories that turned out to really not be true than she is. So I wonder from MSNBC's point of view, you know, if they're thinking about the huge credibility crisis in the mainstream media in these negotiations with her. Yeah, that's a good point. And she, her, her monologues, I, I, I think were really uh, she kind of pioneered, maybe not totally, I'm sure other people were doing it to some extent, but that's what I associate with her, the, this very, very long form walks you through a story, you know, kind of directs you in a certain way, but a very, you know, fact-based, agenda, agenda driven, and, you know, often I'm, I'm disagreeing with how things are characterized and where the conclusions are leading one, but, but very thorough, not just, you know, not just takes, a kind of thorough, almost like a like a magazine feature story being read to you in in TV and cable news format. That's and, and she delivered and presented it really well. They were always really well researched. That's actually a kind of skill that lends itself well to podcasting, to a number of other things you can do other than have a cable news show. So it doesn't surprise me that she's interested in other things. Also, there's I don't know that you're right that Russia, you know, Russia was the thing. She was obsessed with that now looks does not really reflect well on her and her journalistic um, judgment. And I don't know what story she's like very interested in now. Do you know what I mean? And they they Trump is mm -hmm. gone, maybe coming back, but gone for right now. And uh, I, I feel like she's probably a, a, a commentator without a beat, which is a sad thing to do. <laughs> Well, he's gone despite the efforts of the mainstream media, right, to keep him afloat in their minds, you know, living rent free in their minds. It's funny because in a way, she almost became like the the Glenn Beck of the left, while I think that someone like Tucker Carlson has become almost like the daily show of the right. So you've had this kind of like, you know, this axis mm. cross where she had, you know, Glenn Beck used to be famous for coming up with these, you know, grand schemes and, you know, like, right, he had that, you know, he would flip the chalkboard and suddenly there would be, you know, everybody's relationship to each other. And Rachel Maddow really started to remind me of that as, you know, as time went on during the Trump administration. And now you have, you know, Tucker Carlson and talking about sometimes very important issues like class, but bringing that same kind of sense of humor that you used to get from shows like The Daily Show, which are now completely, you know, basically humorless and totally, you know, ideology driven. And so what happens to 
MSNBC if Rachel Maddow does decide to step away. You know, she's really their kind of flagship. She's the anchor of, of, their, of their program, their evening programming. Uh, do, you, would, do, you see a, do you see a political shift uh, coming from them if she departs? Or do you think that they're so associated with that particular brand of kind of resistance democratic politics that they will, that they will just can kind of lean in to that, so to speak? You know, it's very interesting because I am always saying how, you know, this is all about class. It's not about, you know, politics. It's not about race. Um, but Rachel Maddow actually does have the most, the biggest working class audience in the liberal media um, in terms of, you know, how many people have a college degree who watch her, what the income breakdown is. She actually does get more people from that lower income, you know, non-college educated group than others for certainly on CNN, but even others on MSNBC. And so part of me is like, OK, I'm glad to see that, you know, the person who like was is most identified with, uh, you know, the Russiagate, you know, nonsense is sort of no longer going to have that platform. But at the same time, from a class point of view, I wonder if this isn't MSNBC doing what CNN did over the last 10 years and saying, look, we don't need these working class viewers. Let's just lean into the highly educated, affluent side of the liberal set. Um, you know, let's try to bring things back to kind of a more, you know, credible, a more respectability politics side of, of, of things. Um, so I. I worry a little bit about that as well. You know what I think they should do? Bring mm -hmm. back Chris Matthews. <laughs> I thought Chris Matthews was great, and he was wrongfully pushed out over some nonsense. Uh, and he's, talk about a class-interested person. He was a kind of older, more moderate Democrat who was, because maybe just because of his age, was out of step with the kind of woke stuff. Uh, and I, I was a little class interested and was very anti-war, uh, was very uh, you know, stridently against the mess in Iraq and Afghanistan. So I like Chris Matthews. I was a, I well, was a shame. I mean, he got lost. tossed out at that moment by, if you remember, that MSNBC and CNN thought that Bernie Sanders had won the primary. And they were having an existential identity crisis. Yeah. Like, uh oh, we have spent the last <laughs> several years, you know, smearing this wing of the party as basically a front for Russia uh, and unserious and going to destroy us. And uh oh, now they're now they're going to win. And then it, it, Chris Matthews had this analogy that he used around World War II, which to me, I think you should be able to use World War II analogies. Yeah, it like, was fine. Like he's not saying that Bernie Sanders is a Nazi. Yeah, and he, and then he was, and also he got in trouble for saying something about Elizabeth Warren that her people didn't like, but like it was correct. I can't also being exactly creepy. Was. Yeah, right. I mean that was some other, you know, the not okay not by today's that was standards, related. but right. uh, well, creepy anyway. But uh, so, uh, but by, by uh, do you think that if uh, if 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 the left does surge again? that MSNBC goes through another similar identity crisis, or do you think that they feel like they've comfortably put down that insurgency? I don't, I don't really see the mainstream media coming back from this because, um, you know, they're following the money, and unfortunately the money is with, you know, these highly educated affluent white progressives. That's sort of where all of the liberal mainstream media outlets seem to be putting their basket uh, you know, I don't know if you guys saw that the New York Times bought Wordle. And, and when you think about who's posting their Wordle scores on Twitter every day, like that's the New York Times' readership. Oh, right? you're calling like... me out. I do that. <laughs> I post them every day. And I got it in two today. I got it in two. <laughs> yeah. Check that uh, out. Yeah. So, it, you, know, the, the, you know, Robbie is the kind of... <laughs> Uh, I love you, Robbie, but you're probably the kind of the the target yeah. audience in terms of demographic, and you know, not in terms sad, of ideology, but, but uh, right, yes. exactly, yes. exactly. But I think what you've really seen is something strange, which is Fox, at least during the day and its news shows, has really made an attempt to moderate what comes through in terms of the news, whereas the liberal outlets have really made an attempt to lean into the most extremists, um, even during the news reportage. And I expect you'll see more and more of that because it reflects what's happening in politics. You see Republicans like Glenn Youngkin appealing to just very commonsensical middle ground, middle class, working class issues. And you see the Democrats more and more identified with the woke overreaches. Well, Baya, somebody's got to keep watching that cable news to let us know what they're saying. And we appreciate your service in doing it. I got you. And we'll have more rising right after this.